Welcome! This quick refresher video is produced by MSU Extension Water Quality, and today we will be overviewing how to properly collect a water grab sample. After arriving at your sampling site, it is important to reference your field protocols. These can be found in your SOP or QAP. Your protocols will help you determine what water samples to collect, how many bottles you will need, and whether or not you will be collecting duplicate or blank samples. Once you are familiar with the necessary protocols, unpack your cooler or equipment bin and make sure you have all the appropriate materials needed to collect the sample. Here at our sample site, we will need to fill three bottles per sample, and we will need to collect duplicate and blank samples. In total, we will be filling nine bottles for this site, three for our sample, three for our duplicates, and three for our blanks. It is important that we properly label our bottles. Again, please refer to your SOP or QAP for labeling instructions. Label the bottles before filling them with a permanent marker and then place clear packing tape over the labels to prevent any smudging of the ink. Now that all of our bottles are labeled and taped, we want to make sure we have enough preservatives. In our field protocols, we see that we will need to preserve samples with sulfuric and nitric acid. Sulfuric acid comes with a yellow cap and nitric comes in a vial with a red cap. We will match the cap of the preservative vial to the cap on the sample bottle to ensure we have one acid vial for each bottle that needs to be preserved. Now that your samples are properly labeled and we know we have the necessary preservatives, it's time to collect our water sample. If you are collecting QC samples, bring two sets of bottles to the stream to fill and leave one behind to be used for the blank samples. Once you are at the stream, affirm you are at the correct location with a GPS or check your photo point monitoring guide if available. Now that you are ready to fill the bottles, find a well-mixed portion of the stream to collect your water from. If the water is high, make sure to only enter up to a level you feel safe. If you do not feel safe entering the stream, then it is acceptable to collect a sample from the stream bank. It is also acceptable to collect a sample from the stream bank if stream flow is low and the substrate is soft and easily disturbed. Before collecting the sample, you will need to triple rinse each bottle. While facing upstream, uncap the bottle and fill it partway with water. Loosely recap and shake. Dispose of the rinsed water downstream behind you. Repeat this process twice more. Now you can collect the sample. Dip the bottle below the surface and invert it as you bring it towards the surface. Recap the bottle with being careful not to touch the inside of the bottle or the cap. Because we are collecting duplicate samples at this site, we will fill our duplicate bottles at the same location as soon as possible after collecting the original sample. As with all samples, we will triple rinse the bottle before collecting the sample. You should fill water to the shoulder of the bottle to leave room for preservatives. If you need to collect blank samples, collect these in the field with your other samples, but use deionized water that has been provided by the lab. However, some protocols may allow you to use deionized water purchased through a grocery store like we are using here. Just like the other samples we have collected, remember to triple rinse each bottle with a little bit of DI water before filling it. After the bottles are filled, add acid to any of the samples that require preservation. Again, make sure the cap on the acid vial matches the color on your sample bottle to ensure you are using the correct preservative. Carefully uncap the sample bottle and then the acid vial. Pour the acid into the bottle and quickly recap. Then shake or invert several times to adequately mix the preservative and sample water. Repeat the process with the rest of your samples that require preservation. Make sure not to touch the inside of the cap or bottle when adding the acid. Before shipping the samples, make sure you have the necessary item. Shipping labels, a chain of custody form, ice for shipping, a garbage bag, enough Ziploc bags to hold the samples and the ice, and packing tape. Before packing the cooler, fill out the chain of custody form 
by following the example provided in your field protocols. Next, double check all the sample labels and the chain of custody form to ensure everything is properly filled out. Now we are ready to pack our samples. First line your cooler with a garbage bag. Then place your samples in Ziploc bags, grouping them by preservative type. Here we are going to group all of the samples that are preserved with sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and those that are not preserved at all separately. Separating the samples in this way will help to prevent contamination of samples if a bottle accidentally opens en route to the lab. Transfer ice into a Ziploc bag and make sure the Ziploc is properly sealed. Then place the ice in the cooler with the samples. Now that the sample bottles and ice are inside the garbage bag, tightly close the garbage bag. Place the chain of custody in another Ziploc bag and tape this to the lid of the cooler or place it on top of the closed garbage bag. Take the packing tape and tape the cooler, making sure the lid is tightly secured. Along with your samples, the lab should have provided you with a shipping label and a custody seal. Fill in the return address on the shipping label and sign the custody seal. Place the shipping label on top of the cooler and the custody seal should be placed vertically over the top of the cooler. This custody seal ensures that the cooler has not been opened or tampered with in transport to the lab. You are now ready to ship your samples. Remember to ship samples on a Monday or Tuesday so that they have enough time to get to the lab for processing before the weekend.